Next, I'd like to uh, have you join me in welcoming Dr. Charlotte Patterson, who is a professor of psychology at the University of Virginia. And she's going to provide us an overview of the more than 30 years of scientific research on the outcome for children raised by same-sex parents. So, thrilled to have her here with us. So, this is a little out of line. So, as we know, and as I think uh, Jennifer Crystal has already uh, overviewed, there, there are already lots of lesbian and gay parents in the United States today. We'll talk just a moment about that, and I'm sure Dr. Gates is going to talk more about it. Uh, I also want to uh, share with you some of the research data that show us that children are thriving in these homes, and that's a very important finding in my uh, view. Um, we know that many kids in foster homes need pregnancy. I'm not going to get into that point here. I think we all you know, know that. The point is that if lesbian and gay parents are allowed to adopt, of course, then more children are going to have permanent homes. And it's for reasons like these that psychologists and many other mental health workers, as you know, I think, uh, have opposed discrimination based on sexual orientation, and, and particularly in the case of adoption and foster care. So that's the, that's the overview. Let's see if there's a can you do me? Push this pussy in that. Thank you. So this is just a, a quick overview of some of the ways in which we can estimate how many lesbian and gay parents there are in the United States. These are based on the U.S. Census Bureau data. People who identified themselves as part of a same-sex couple were also asked if they had children under the age of 18 in their homes. Now, many parents, of course, children may have aged older, you know, could be older than this, but it's a bottom level estimate. And what you see here is that more than a third of lesbian couples say yes to that question. And even a substantial number of uh, male couples say yes to that question. They presumably gay couples. The other really interesting thing that we have from, I think, from national data is that uh, the, the Centers for Disease Control, as you may know, runs a survey called the National Survey on Family Growth. And they uh, ask uh, Americans of childbearing years uh, a lot of questions about these kinds of things, a lot of questions about sexual orientation as well. And they have found that somewhere in the range of 40 to 50, even a little more than 50% of their child, currently childless but adult uh, lesbian and gay respondents say they might like to have children. And that's a very interesting figure when we think about child welfare. Now, um, research on these topics, how do children do when they grow up in lesbian and gay parent homes is the question that I think we need to, to think about. And one of the things that I wanted to say about it at first is, is this area in all of psychology is really quite extraordinary in psychological research. What a tremendous consensus has developed around this work. Uh, it's unusual and, and it's, it's very remarkable. There has been, as I think Jennifer Crystal said a moment ago, uh, a full 30 years of research. I was trying to think about it this morning. The first article that comes to my mind was actually published in the 1970s, which is even more uh, time than that now. Uh, lots of this published in, in really top tier journals, peer, which means peer reviewed journals, articles reviewed blind. That is to say, of course, that the reviewer doesn't know the name of the author as they're reviewing the piece. Uh, there's quite a bit of this research, uh, uses many different kinds of methodologies, longitudinal research, cross-sectional studies, all kinds of different uh, methodological approaches, has worked with children, uh, teenagers, um, even young adults, uh, and really uh, quite a remarkable uh, consensus. Uh, in the next slide, please. Um, and here's what the consensus is. I'm going to change the order of these slides many times. And the, the consensus here really is that children, and uh, I can't underline the word enough, I suppose, here, but the children really do uh, do well in uh, lesbian and gay parented homes as compared to demographically similar uh, homes parented by heterosexual uh, adults. And here are some of the variables that people have studied, the kinds of issues that people are interested in here. The kids' relationships within their families, what are the relationships like with their parents, with their siblings, with their other relatives, grandparents, for example. Uh, uh, family relationships look the same. Relationships with peers, also very uh, positive information there. Uh, and, and many people wonder about teenage kids in particular, you know, teenagers who um, in middle schools and high schools may, of 
course, peer relations are incredibly important during that period of our lives. Uh, so you're not more teasing among these kids. They're just as popular as kids growing up in demographically similar uh, homes parented by uh, opposite sex parents and so forth. If you go all the way down the list, behavior and conduct, uh, gender development, self-concept. Uh, even a, a recent national study of school achievement among uh, kids in same-sex parent versus opposite-sex parent homes showing the same basic uh, result. A really remarkably strong consensus again. Next slide, please. Now, uh, if you're interested in any of the detail about that work and you want to study the individual pieces of research, this document, which I think is, is in the back of the room, uh, is available to you. It's published by the American Psychological Association uh, a few years back, and it summarizes the research. Uh, there's a, a summary of about 15 pages of you know fine print uh, going into the details of the studies, and there's an annotated bibliography as well. So if there's something of particular interest to you, you can find it that way pretty fast. Um, this document can be downloaded day and night from the web free of charge, thanks to the American Psychological Association, or you can get a copy free of charge in the back of the book uh, anytime. And uh, it's a summary that has been used in many different uh, circumstances, and if it's useful to you, uh, I hope you will take advantage of it as a, as a resource. Uh, next slide, please. Now, one of the things that has changed recently in this area is that we have, since this document was published, we have some new research on adoptive lesbian and gay parented families, which is particularly relevant to the bill at hand. Uh, and I thought you might be interested in some of those uh, results, which have been published largely within the last two or three years. And there are some which are still in the pipeline. Research uh, on uh, Children, as I said earlier, most of the research was on children born to lesbian or gay parents, and now we have this newer research on children who have been adopted into uh, lesbian or gay parent uh, homes. This research confirms, as I think one would expect, confirms very strongly the research consensus that we had from earlier studies. The kids in adopted homes, when compared to kids in similar adoptive homes with heterosexual parents, are doing about as well as we say, their development is no better, no worse. You know, we, we're not talking about a complete absence of difficulties here. We all have the garden run problems in all families, right? But we want to underline uh, that there is a great similarity in the outcomes. Again, healthy behavior and conduct, good gender role development, uh, healthy family relationships, and so forth. Next slide, please. And so the research consensus uh, here, I think, is extraordinarily clear. Kids are well adjusted, and there's really no evidence to justify any kind of discrimination. Now, this view is reflected in the official policies of the American Psychological Association, and it has been for some years now. Uh, uh, the American Psychological Association, in the next slide, I'll show you uh, some of the wording from that. If we can. Thank you. Um, as you see here, uh, these are just a few excerpts <laughs> from the APA proposal of policy. APA, I have to read this, APA opposes any discrimination based on sexual orientation in matters of adoption, child custody, visitation, foster care, and reproductive health services. APA supports legalization of joint adoptions and second parents adoptions of children being reared by same-sex couples. And well, this is, I'm a psychologist, so I picked the APA resolution, but, but uh, this is representative of the resolutions of many important uh, and mainstream professional organizations across the country. Uh, so, in uh, the next slide, just to wrap up, this is just a little summary of what I've tried to share. We have a lot of gay parents, the kids that are growing up in those homes are doing very well. We know we have kids who need homes, we have lesbian and gay individuals who want to become parents, and so psychology and other mental health professionals do oppose discrimination based on sexual orientation and adoption and foster care and it's for these reasons. Thank you very much. Oh, one more slide. I wanted to leave you with my contact information. If there are um, questions that you or others in your office might have about particular questions in this research literature, I invite your call. I'm happy to talk with you about any of them. And believe me, there's a whole lot more detail than we have time for here. Thank you very much.